Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, I'm gonna be showcasing my PC slash programming setup. Now chances are, if it's not your first time on this channel, that you've seen this setup before. In fact, you can see it behind me right now. You can see the RGB in the PC, you can see the monitor and all of that stuff, but I've never done a video where I've actually gone through and shown you exactly what I've used, talked about why, and potentially made some recommendations if you guys are looking to upgrade your setup. So with that said, I'll quickly mention that I have an absolutely ridiculously overkill setup here. You do not need anything even remotely close to what I have to start programming. So please don't feel discouraged if you don't have this stuff. Don't feel like you need to get any of it. This is just me showing you what I use and well, I'll tell you if I would recommend some specific items or why I've actually purchased them. So let's go ahead and get started and I will talk to you about my PC slash programming setup. So I'll start by just giving you a general overview of this setup, kind of showing you what it looks like and talking to you a bit about what I actually use this setup for. So first of all, the space that I'm located in, which is pretty important, is in the basement of my parents' house. Now I have a really large room. The room that I'm in actually used to be a theater room. I have a projector up there and there's like a big flat screen kind of projector screen on the other side. We actually renovated and modified this room specifically for me. So I was really fortunate that my dad's actually quite handy. He built like a big massive door uh, and then there's this big massive L desk that we built specifically for this room. So that kind of starts the setup up off but what I use this space for is the following so I am a programmer I am a student and I am also a content creator so a lot of the equipment that I have here especially a lot of the expensive equipment is actually primarily used for content creation right so my lights my camera my microphones all of that kind of stuff and then I just kind of tie that together with my programming setup, quote unquote. So I have my monitors, my keyboard, my mouse, my computer, my lights, all that kind of stuff, which is specific really for the programming aspect. So I'll try to distinguish between those things in this video, but just keep that in mind that a lot of the equipment that I have here is simply because I am a content creator and well, I need that kind of stuff to be able to make videos that look like this. So the order in which I discuss these items has no significant importance, so you don't need to read into that, but the first items that I'm gonna talk about here are my monitors. Now, I will start by saying that I highly recommend anyone that's programming has at least two monitors or one very large screen like an ultra wide monitor. I cannot stress how much of a difference this makes being able to have your code on one screen and then have Stack Overflow or Spotify or whatever else it is on the other screen is super important. And while I honestly don't know what I would do without a dual monitor setup. Now that said, what I have here is actually kind of a combination of both the things I recommended. So what I have here is a 27 inch BenQ monitor with an 144 Hertz refresh rate and a 2K resolution. And this here is the LG 34 inch ultra wide monitor. Now I need to tell you about this monitor because this thing is amazing. It's actually game changing. And honestly, I think I could suffice by just using the LG monitor because it's massive. And well, for programming, it's so nice to be able to have three separate windows vertically on one display. Now LG was actually kind enough to sponsor this video and send me over this monitor for free. So like I said, it is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor that has a 1340 by 1440 P resolution. This gives it a 21 by nine aspect ratio and makes it the same height as my 27 inch monitor. This monitor is pretty much designed for programmers and comes with some great software that allows you to split the screen into multiple unique layouts. It is game changing to be able to view multiple sized windows side by side and especially great for using an IDE or navigating large code files. It has definitely increased my productivity, and if you want to get an idea of what it can do for you, then head over to LG's Ultrawide Festival website where you can customize your own ultrawide monitor. By customizing your own monitor, you'll be entered for a chance to win one or get a $50 Amazon gift card. Now, LG also has a sense of humor, which you can find in their campaign video, which is a pretty funny skit of a developer not being able to find his error because, well, his screen was not large enough. So anyways, another big thank you to LG. You can check them and this monitor out from the link in the description. And now let's get into the rest of my programming setup. So now I'm gonna talk about my computers. Now notice that is plural. I do actually have multiple machines that I use, some for development, some not so much for development, but I will go through them. 
So the first computer I have is my laptop. This is a 16 inch MacBook Pro. I got this last year. This is the, uh, I guess, 2019 version. I don't actually know if they have a newer version and it's the base model. It is a six core i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I used to use this for programming when I was in school. I actually do like uh, programming on Macs and this is a great computer because the 16 inch display is really nice and I actually don't mind the keyboard at all. So really a great computer. I definitely recommend it if you have the budget for it. But recently, since I've been back at home, this computer really, all it's been doing is actually just running my audio. So I have Logic Pro on it and that records all of the audio for my videos and apply some filters and all of that kind of stuff. Now I do have this setup with a docking station. So if I want, I can turn this whole monitor and PC setup into like the Mac setup so I can run off of this computer. And I have a keyboard mouse switch, which means I just press a button and my keyboard and mouse will switch between the Mac and the Windows computer. So obviously that leads me to my Windows machine, which is my big powerful workstation, which I use like 90% of the time. Uh, I really just like working on desktop computers. That's just my preference. And this thing, you'll understand why I want to work on it. It is a Ryzen 9 3900X processor. That's a 12 core processor in there. I have an RTX Titan uh, or a Titan RTX, whatever you call it. Nvidia actually sent that to me. I was not crazy enough to buy that graphics card. Don't worry. And it has 64 gigabytes of RAM. And then there's two M.2, two terabyte SSDs. One of them is booting into Windows. And then I have another SSD, so a third SSD that's one terabyte that runs my dual boot into Ubuntu. So usually I do my programming on Windows. Some people might cringe at that, but when I'm making videos and stuff, a lot of the times, like most of you guys are using Windows. So I try to mirror that by having my main computer being on Windows. But sometimes if I'm doing some more specific things, I will boot into the Ubuntu OS. And honestly, I don't have a crazy preference over the operating systems. I know how to use them all and I'll just, you know, use which ones I would need to for specific tasks. Now I do have a third computer. This is more of just a server build. So this is, I won't talk about it too much, but it's like a 10 terabyte server just sitting kind of in the corner of my room. And that's what I use for storing all of my video files, all of my audio files, editing files, and just all that kind of stuff that I don't want uh, clogging up my main machine. So those are my main computers. You can now probably imagine why I prefer to use the desktop machine. And now let's move on. And now moving on to the keyboard. So obviously your keyboard is going to be one of the most important items in a programming setup. And well, I can give you my recommendations for which ones I like, but this really comes down to preference. Everyone prefers different types of switches, different amounts of travel. And well, you're just going to have to kind of research and mess around with some different keyboards until you figure out which one you like. Now, personally, I've used many different keyboards over the years. Right now, I actually have about six keyboards in this room. And my favorite types of switches, I do really prefer mechanical keyboards, are Cherry MX Brown and Cherry MX Blue. Now the Cherry MX Brown is something that has a little bit of a less audible click to it. I believe it is a lighter amount of pressure that you need to apply to it. And then the Cherry MX Blue has more pressure and it's that nice like kind of clicky sound. The keyboard that I'm actually using right now is the DAS Keyboard 4C TKL. Now I really do like this keyboard. It is different than some of the other ones that I've used. There's no RGB on it. And it also is a shorter size keyboard. So it doesn't have that numpad on the end. And honestly, I never use the numpad. I actually can't think of a situation where I've ever had to use the numpad. So that's nice to have it a little bit shorter, but it's not one of those keyboards that's like all mushed together and has the arrow keys mixed in with all the other keys, because I really do like to have the arrow keys kind of separated from the other part of the keyboard so that when I'm navigating a code file, it's really easy to move around. This one also has two USB ports on the side. It's Cherry MX Brown switches and it has a soft tactile typing experience. So that's what I've been using for right now, would highly recommend. And in fact, DAS Keyboard was actually nice enough to send over two of these keyboards, one that I'm using and one that I can give away to you guys. So if you wanna be entered to win a DAS Keyboard 4C TKL, I will handle the shipping. I will send it to you wherever you are in the world. Then go ahead and join my Discord server. There will be a link for that in the description and there'll be a channel somewhere in there that says giveaway and you just have to follow some basic instructions you will be entered and then whoever wins well i will send you the key so now i'll move on to the mouse the mouse that i'm using right now is actually the logitech 
MX Master. I think that's the exact model of it. I am going to link all this stuff in the description so you can check there if I made a mistake. But this mouse is amazing. This has a ton of different buttons. It has this really cool button like where my thumb is. It has the forward button, the backwards button. It has a vertical scroll as well as a horizontal scroll. And the coolest thing about this mouse is the scroll wheel. So it has a setting. So there's this little button where I can toggle the speed of the scroll wheel and I can make it do infinite scrolling. And what that means is I can like flick the scroll wheel and it will never stop. It will just keep, well, it will, but it will take a really long time to stop. It'll just keep spinning super fast. And this is amazing for programming because if I'm in a really large file and I want to quickly get down to the bottom of it, all I have to do is just flick the mouse scroll wheel and it will automatically realize that I'm trying to scroll really fast and just boom, start going all the way down to the bottom of the file. Seriously, a game changer. This is an expensive mouse, but it feels great in my hand. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I just highly recommend it. And seriously, like one of the cheaper items in my setup that makes a massive difference for my efficiency uh, when I'm navigating and working through different codes. So now I'll quickly discuss my chair. So obviously you can see the chair that I'm sitting in right now. I really like the chairs that have a super high back. I like something that I can lean all the way back in. This has a tilt as well as a recline feature, which is really nice. Obviously I can adjust the armrests. I can move them to the side. I can move them up and down. It has the lumbar support cushion. It has the neck cushion. Uh, and this is just a great chair. It's also on wheels, which is really nice. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this chair just because this is kind of, you know, like a gaming, like racing chair kind of thing. And I had got it just because people had recommended that I buy something like this. But looking back, I probably would have rather get something that's more of an ergonomic chair. I think this one is pretty comfortable, but from what I've seen, it's not the best for your back. Now, I'm young enough that that's probably fine, but I am considering getting a nicer chair that has like kind of a more curvature and like ergonomic structure to it. So I won't necessarily recommend this chair. I'll just say that this is what I'm currently using and it's fine. It's a high quality chair, but there definitely is some better options out there. So now I'll talk about some of the more random and kind of quirky things in my setup and why I have those. So first of all, I have a really nice mat on the ground that I always put my feet on. This is actually a bath mat, funny enough, uh, but it's just super comfortable. I've used it for a long time and it's just great. I just love having something that's kind of like warm and fuzzy on the ground when I'm programming, just makes it much nicer to be there. I also have a little fan that I have on my desk. I mean, it's kind of a given why I would have that. I have a speaker. This is a Beats pill. That's just what I use for my audio. I also have AirPods. I use those just if I'm on like a conference call or if I'm, you know, like in some kind of Google Meet or Zoom call or something like that. Of course, I have my microphone. This is a really high-end microphone. This is a Rode NT1. It actually is an XLR input microphone. And what that means is I need a USB audio interface to be able to get this to work. So without getting into too much detail, that little red box you see there is a Scarlett 4i4, I believe that's what it's called. And that's what I use to actually take my audio from the XLR input and get it into a USB signal so that I can put it into my computer. Now, what I'm actually doing is I'm running all my audio into my Mac and then my Mac is outputting the audio back to the Scarlett. So it's filtering it and having the output go through that. And then from the Scarlett, I have an output jack and that output jack is running into my main computer. So in theory, I could stream my one audio source to both of my computers at the exact same time. And I could also stream it to other output sources if I wanted to, because this specific device has four outputs on the back of it. So that's it for the audio interface. I also happen to have a UPS underneath my desk that is an uninterruptible power supply. That's really important because if I'm working on a file, if I'm filming a video, if I'm doing something like that, obviously I don't want a power surge making me lose all of my progress. So I have my server and I have all of my other important hardware devices plugged into that UPS. And the next two things I'm gonna mention are actually the most underrated items in my setup. I absolutely love them. I will not make a PC programming setup without having these items in it. The first is my fidget toys. So I have two fidget spinners and I have this like fidget flip thing. I have no idea what it's actually called, but it's like a square and it like kind of rolls around on the table. But I just love having something to fidget with. I always find myself reaching for like a pen or a fidget spinner or that little cube thing whenever I'm programming or I'm trying to think about something pretty deeply. 
Next, I also have e-reading lamps. So these are really cool. These lamps are specifically designed to be put over top of your monitor. So they're anti-glare and they really are just designed to make it easier to view your screen. Now I won't go into too much detail on this, but like I think the science behind it is like you need adequate lighting when you're looking at a computer screen and they just hang right over top of the screen, kind of illuminate the desk area, which is really nice if I'm like writing notes or something. And they just make it kind of easier on your eyes to stare at the screen for a long period of time. These lights also have a brightness and temperature adjustment. So really cool and just super underrated. I would highly recommend them. They make an absolutely massive difference. Finally, you can see I have a USB hub sitting on my desk. That's just because I ran out of USB ports on my computer. And then my Mac is sitting on top of this like little fan thing. So I don't even really know what to call it. I guess it's like a laptop stand and it has fans underneath it that just blow cool air onto my MacBook Pro. So that way the MacBook Pro fan itself doesn't rev up and be really loud, especially when I'm recording videos like this. So definitely a super cool purchase. That was like 40 bucks. And that means that my MacBook Pro fan just like never spins up and I have a quiet quieter fan underneath it that is handling its actual cooling. So with that, the last thing I will say is I also have an iPad Pro. Now I just got this and this is honestly like such a cool device. I have the Apple Pencil with it and just for taking notes or doing any kind of like drawings or math or anything like that, super awesome. I don't think I'm ever really going to have to use paper again. And well, that kind of concludes my setup tour. Of course, I have all my studio equipment and lights and stuff. I mean, that's not really part of the PC programming setup, so I'm not going to go into that in depth. But yeah, that is what I have. That is what I use. And I would love to hear your thoughts on it all in the comments down below. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel. And of course, I will see you again in another YouTube video.